Hi, Himanju. Hey, who's that? Ankit here. Hey, Ankit. Hey. Thanks for organizing this. It will help us a lot. All right. That's good to hear. I hope this helps. So, yeah, welcome to the uh, coding lab. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to follow the format. I don't know if you guys have ever been to this these sessions. So, basically, what we do is I'm going to throw out some problems, mostly two to three problems, depending on the difficulty. And uh, I'll be asking you to um, basically attempt solving those problems. I'm going to just quickly mute you guys here. Um, Give me a second. Let me. I'm going to mute everybody and then you guys can unmute yourself when you want to speak. So basically, in this session, uh, we're going to have two to three problems. And uh, based on the difficulty level, uh, if let's say there are three problems, then if there are three problems, then basically the one would be simple and then maybe uh, two medium, something like that, or like one simple, one hard like that. If, if we have two problems, then keep something like this kind of format. And at, at times what will happen is sometimes these will be Python technology specific that, I mean, I want you to take away uh, something uh, about Python, like how to do certain things in Python. And uh, at times they'll be more of like interview centric problems. So a mix of everything. So idea is that if you keep actively coding like for like a few months, then I mean your practice remains intact and you are good for multiple type of situation. Like if need be an interview, you can crack an interview and all that. So this once again, um, I'm, I've merged two different sessions into one session. I'm gonna keep the problems a little simple. I'm gonna reveal the problems shortly and the format is something like this. Basically, what we do is at the beginning of the session, so we begin by showing problems, whatever, two to three problems. And then I'm going to be silent and I'm going to give you 30 minutes roughly to solve those problems. And then I'm going to jump in and then discuss. So, you can either can write the code or basically give you the pseudo code and then publish the code later on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be sharing a Git repository that I that I maintain. So the source code will be there of all the problems. In the future, you want to visit, you can visit. Also, I'm recording. I may publish this recording as well, and I'll let you know if uh, when this link is available. All right, so let's get started. Hey Manju, just a small question. Yes. Uh, so how much do you think we should rely on Google for these problems? Like pure code should be from our own side or like we can just look up some syntax or concepts? Up to you. Okay. Completely up to you. So the idea is think of this as, although this is, I'm once again, I don't want to give a feel of interview, but think of this, that this question has been asked to you in an interview setting. Now, what would you do in that situation? How will you approach that problem? Got it. Thanks. So you can look for nitty gritty syntaxes here and there. And uh, but don't look the whole problem. If you want to gain something out of it, then don't look the whole problem because most many of the problems in session are at least I think one problem is going to be some some kind of a classical problem that you can always visit and and check what the problem like what the uh, solution of the problem is. So but I'm, my suggestion would be that like, not look at the source code right away. <clears throat> All right, today we have three problems and I'm gonna share the link shortly. So this is the problems. Let me share the link actually. And let me I'm pasting of this on the chat window for you. And then I'm going to explain these problems to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post these silly problems here and I'm going to you, you go access those problems. From the top, you can see there are three problems. So rotate half is spellindrome and find all substrings. You read these problems. I'll give you five minutes, it's seven, seven. At seven, 12, I will explain what the problems are. 
again in detail and then um, I'll give you the time to solve. At 7.15 you will get control problems. So read all three problems? Yeah, you can read all the three problems and then I'll explain them as well. Okay, so I think let me talk about the problems now. So we have three problems today. The one is the rotate half. I think it might be pretty straightforward, but basically you have a function in this and you pass an input, which is a string to this function, okay? Some kind of a string. And then this function returns a rotated string back. So the rotation rule works as follows, that if the string is of even length, for example, you have a string like Saturn, then the back comes to fr front. That's a function. If the string is odd length, for example, the example is of Neptune, then the extra character you have, for example, this is four length and this is three length, the extra character goes to the front. So Nap. So the extra character will be in the back string. That's a straightforward problem. If you have a question, let me know. And in the source code, I think the one I gave you, I think there's a slight mistake. Um, I did not add a loop which is going to run over all the test cases in the end. So it's you have probably just have the rotate half kind of thing. Uh, let me just show you what it is. It's only this much without any input. So you can either pass input yourself like as many number of time or you can just write some kind of a loop. You can just say 40 in test cases. Basically rotate half of the, te the test case and you can print the result. Up to you, which, whichever way you prefer. Okay, that's problem number one. Problem number two is a palindrome, right? So in this, you have a function which accepts a string and returns true or false depending on whether the string is a palindrome or not. Now this is a very, this is a very simple problem and a very classical problem, right? But I wanted to keep it. This is the first session uh, for many of the folks and. It's a, I mean, it's a good problem to solve. So basically what the problem is, you have a function, right? a string goes into the function and the function returns either a true or a false. True if the string is a palindrome and false if the string is not a palindrome, right? So 
for example a string kayak would be palindrome you can ignore sorry uh, one important thing basically you can ignore case as long as letter match that's fine and false if the string is let's say a b c d e that's a that's not a palindrome but once again what a palindrome is suppose you have a string like kayak so read read from the front or from the back it results in the same characters all of the characters relative to the middle offset are same if the string is of odd character then middle character can if the string is of odd length then the middle character can be anything doesn't matter so in this case y is okay there so that's a simple uh, once again a simple problem uh, palindrome if you have any question let me know and the third string third problem here is to generate all substrings right so suppose you have a string the string is let's say a b c d what are all the possible substrings you have to print all the possible substrings in that uh, in this solution so for example a is a substring then a b then a b c then a b c d right then b b c b c d c c d and d just by writing that way i've kind of given you the solution so you have to print all, all possible substrings in that string that's the third problem there <clears throat> if you have any question you can ask me looks like no and i am going to mute myself and give you half an hour to work on the solution and then we'll discuss the solution right your time starts now Yes. <clears throat> so, for the first problem, suppose uh, let's look at the solution. So, suppose the string is something like Saturn, right? In that case, the indexes of the string would be as uh, right. So that would be the index, indexes of each character. 
if I was to do, so this is a string s. If I was to do len of s, that would give me answer as six. If I was to say len of s by two, that would give me three, right? So in that case, if this n of s by two, if I look for a sub slicing of this string from this to len s by two, I would be essentially looking at slicing from zero to three. And a slice of zero to three would mean what? It will include zero, one, two, but not three. So it will get give me these three characters, right? And certainly a slice of three onwards will give me everything to end. Right? So if I take this slice, right? So if I take this slice, and if I take this slice, and I do a plus, then I get the answer. For even for even that's really straightforward. The problem actually is not that hard because even for the odd ones it will work. Right? Let's take the scenario of uh, odd length string. For example, suppose the string is Neptune. Right? Once again, the indexes are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if I do a len of s, then that gives me what I'm denoting is by capital L. Len of s, then it's going to give me 7. And if I do a len of s, by two, that will give me three. Right? So if I do a slice of zero to L by two, whatever this is, then I still get the first three characters. If I look for L by two to one, then I will get these characters. And then I can just do this, do this, and plus them. Right, this is uh, basically not that complicated. Have I asked that the extra character needs to go to the front half, then you would have to do a little bit more logic here. You can try that you by yourself. So let's code this problem. So I'm here, okay, let's, where am I? Let's just run this code and make sure this is compiling fine. I mean, running fine. Yeah. Give me a second. Just give me a second. Yeah, let me run this now. See what is going on here. So there seems to be some problem. Yeah. Let me pass an argument to this rotate half here. And just let's say 40 in test cases. Rotate half, let's say print of rotate half and maybe uh, T. Now let's run this code. Basically, none, none, none is coming is the answer because that reason is fine because I'm currently not doing anything inside the function. So let's do something inside the function now. Right. So First thing is, I need to obtain the half, right? So I'm going to say the half equals to len of s by two. That's how I can obtain the half if you go back to this description here. So this is, I'm doing len of s by two. Now, basically, if I just do s of half to end, that means this is the second uh, part of the string, it is this part. And if I do a plus of s of beginning to half, and then I just return it, then what will happen? Let's see. Let's run this code, and we get an we get the answer, but we get an error as well. And can anybody tell me what the error is right now? Here, we got. We'll an have error. to because of the none, uh, so we'll have exactly. to handle it. Exactly. So what I'm doing, I'm doing a mistake. There is a none here as well, right? And if I do a len of none, that's a mistake because you cannot just, the none type doesn't have a len. That's the problem here. 
So I need to, on the first line, just quickly check if the string is there or not. So I'm just going to check if the string is not empty and not none. So basically, I'm just going to say if not s, then basically return none. So this this kind of check is going to work in both cases. Either the string is empty or the string is none. It's going to work in both the cases. So now I run it, and you will see for the empty string, I'm getting none, none, and then you notice. This is an even length string. This is an odd length string, and this is an odd length string. One, two, three, four, five. So this case, this works on all the three cases. So a very simple three-line code is all needed for this particular solution. And uh, if yeah. you mentioned you here that length doesn't become like 3.0 or something like that, some issue is it taken care of by the double slash, or you need exactly. to type cast it? No, exactly. So the the reason you're correct there. So what happens is, uh, let me fire up the terminal. Actually, I can use this terminal here. If, if you look at the bottom of my screen right now, so suppose I do a five by two, that's a 2.5, sorry. If I do, let's say a 10 by two, that's 5.0. If you try to index that, that's a problem. But if you do a 10, 10 by two like that, then it's a five. So in this case, in this previous example, if I just switch it and make it Linux by two like that, then I'm going to run into a problem. And the problem is the slice indices must be integers or none or have index or whatever. So, so that, that works. Okay. okay. So that's problem number one. Let's look at the problem number two. There are several ways to solve problem number two, and you might have uh, solved it in different ways as well. So by definition, the, what is what uh, palindrome is basically is that from the front and the back, if you read it, it's going to be similar. So if you have a string, for example, suppose like kayak. <clears throat> let's say you have this string and let's say you reverse this string in the next shot, right? You have another string, which is reverse of this. So starting with this K A Y A K. So if you do a reverse of somehow S and you lead to S1, which is kayak, and then you can just do comparison if S1 and S2 are same. If they are same, then you have a palindrome. Or true, then basically you have a palindrome. Otherwise, false, you don't. That's one simple approach to do this problem, right? You can just reverse the string. You can check how to reverse a string. It's it's not that complicated, but I don't want to. I want to focus on something else. If you algorithmically look into uh, this, then basically it will require an extra string here. And let's say if you don't want to consume an extra string, you want to do it uh, in the space. Then I'm going to show you another approach of looping. So there are once again multiple ways you can loop this. Suppose I have a string again. Uh, let's say kayak. So the easiest way to loop is basically in this kind of problem. Anytime you want to compare the boundaries from left to right, this is something called two pointer approach, which is a very standard approach of solving these problems. So you put, a, you put some kind of an, uh, in, I, I, uh, some kind of a marker at the beginning and some kind of a marker at the end. Let's say you call the marker as X and you call the marker as Y. And then you compare whether these two characters are equal or not. If they are not equal, you immediately quit. Suppose this is S, and you can just say, is S of X equals equals S of Y? S of Y. If this condition is false at any point, then you immediately quit. If this is false, then you immediately quit and return false. But if this condition is true, assume that this condition is true, then what you're going to do is, you basically move Y1 forward. Your Y comes here and you move X one forward, X comes here. And then once again, you check this, if the condition is true. If let's say you reach a point where X and Y are at the same point, and you have not encountered a false situation, then your string is a palindrome, basically. And the usual way you can terminate this loop here is by checking if Y is gone greater than X. 
sorry, my mistake. If X is got greater than Y. Right, so suppose this is the string and these are the indexes. One, two, three, four. So what happens? X begins at the index zero, Y begins at the index four. Then X goes to this index, Y goes to this index. Then X goes to this index, Y goes to this index. And then if the condition is true, you're going to continue forward and X is going to move here and Y is going to move here. At this point, X is greater than this. That means you have already traversed half of the string and everything was same from front and back. So no need to move forward. And hence you can terminate uh, your checking. So let's code this one, this part. I'm going to use a while loop to do this. You can also use a for loop. It's a slightly more messy syntax. That's it in this case. I'm going to use a while loop. Let's begin this problem, this palindrome. So first thing is I want to I want to create two iterators, one at the beginning and one at the end. So let's x at the let's say is the beginning. And I'm going to say x equals to zero. Let's just first add a check here. So okay, if not s, then basically return something like empty or non string. Or you can return something. You can return an error code. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm just printing something. Well, I'm returning a string. Okay. So x equals to zero. And let's say y is equals to the last index of the string. So if I wanted to add the last index of the string, I can write len of s minus one. That will give me the last index. Right? For example, kayak, the length is five and the last index is four. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to write a while loop. While loop is based on a condition, right? It's not based on uh, the container length, but it's based on, on the condition. So I'm going to say while x is smaller than y, while this condition is true. So once again, coming back here, while this condition holds true here. Sorry, yeah. While this condition holds true, that x is uh, smaller than y, we want I, I, we want to traverse this. No need to traverse after that. So, if at any point of time both the characters, both the characters on those indexes are not equal, then we return false right there. Right. So I'm just going to quickly say if s of x, sorry, s of x is not equals to s of y. If this is ever case, then just simply return false there. Let's just run this code with this much logic. I just run, actually, no, you cannot run this code with this, with this much logic because you're gonna run into an infinite loop, right? Because if I'm not incrementing, decrementing X and incrementing and decrementing X and Y, then the condition will always be true and you will be in an infinite loop. So I'm gonna code that as other condition as well. So if that is the case, okay, then return false. But if that is not the case, that means both the characters are equal. Then at this point, we need to increment the x, say x plus equals to one, and decrement y, y minus equals one. Right. So this is the step where I am moving x from here to here and y from here to here. And then once this, sorry. So if they are not equal, then return false immediately. If they are equal, then basically do this situation and go back to the top of the loop again. And implement and run this till we reach the half of the loop. If we reach the half of the loop and we are still, not, we haven't still returned false, that means we have not encountered a situation where X was not equals to Y. And at this point, I'm going to come out of the while loop and return a true in this function. I'm going to say return true. So this is my logic for calculating the palindrome. Once again, you have several ways of doing it and Python makes it like really simple to even do it in other ways as well. You can just quickly reverse the string and then just check if both the strings are okay, are the same or not. Let's run this code. 
Okay, time to run this code and see if this is working fine. Let me see if this is good. Yes. So we run it and we notice that okay, kayak is true, one two three two one is true, ABCD is false, and this string is also false. The reason why this is false, okay. So let's just take first of all this logic, right? This logic is working fine now. The last string returned false, even though it's it's a basically uh, palindrome. Can anybody tell me why it's returning false and how can I fix it? Because uh, M is in small case, you know. Exactly, exactly. So basically, I'm just qu quickly gonna just do a comparison with the lower version of the characters. Make everything lower and then check. And then run this code again. And now everything is basically correct. You have true, false, true, false, and all that situation is good. So that's a code for a spelling room there. Now I'm going to move to the third problem, which is find all substrings. Who got this one? I think I did. Okay, perfect. And how did you solve this? Uh, two for loops? Yeah, two for loops and then a dictionary just uh, to count how many of them. Got it. Okay, uh, good so, suppose I have a string, let's say it's um, something again, let's say take for example, same string again. Yeah, again, same string. And let's say we want to compute all these substrings here. Okay, a substring is, I mean, if we just think, like if you think uh, humanly, like if this problem was given to us, if it was manageable by just by doing normal brain processing, we would have gotten down the key. We could have say K, K, A, K, A, Y, K, A, Y, A, and like that we could have moved forward and then we could begin with A, A, Y, and like that. Right? So this would have been simple. How are we doing this in our head? How are we solving this in our head is basically, we first anchor ourselves in the position. And then we check first, then first two, then first three, then first four, and then first five. Then we move our anchor to this position. Then we check A, then A Y, then A Y A, and then A. Then we move our anchor to the next position. And then we can do the same logic again. Right. So, so we need two anchors at any point of time. So first, let's say I have two markers, X and Y. First X is at zero and the Y needs to go from zero. Sorry, I needs to go from, let's say yeah, zero, one, two, three, four, like that. Then X needs to be at one. And then this needs to go from one, two, three, four, like that. And then this to be a two and then two, three, four, like that. So clearly we can have two loops, right? If you have a if you have one loop on X, which goes from zero to len of S minus len of S, let's say. Len of S minus one. And if we have another loop Y, which goes from whatever the position of X is to len of S minus one, right? For each of these x, there is a y loop which goes from x to len of s minus one. Then we'll get this problem. We'll, we'll be able to get all the indexes. Let's first of all print all the indexes. Let's see if we can get hold of all the indexes. I'm going to start coding this problem. So I'm going to say suppose for of for x in first let's compute the length. Okay. So capital L equals to let's say len of s. Okay. Now I'm going to say for x in range of L. And let's just say print x. Let's just say that way, print x. We run this code. 
Okay, let me pass something to it. Let's say let's pass universe to it. Do you notice this is the output? Right, this is the output of just a one for loop. So this for loop X anchors at each position. Now, can we write another for loop inside this for loop to anchor at all the positions from X to the end, not from one to the end, but X to the end. So I'm going to write another one so for Y in range of, let's say, X to L. Okay, and then print X comma Y. Let's just print that. If you do that, then the output is going to be, hang on, what happened? Oh, sorry, my mistake, my mistake. Let's run this again, there was a colon missing. So what am I doing? I'm so sorry, this is. You need an indentation. Yeah, classic rookie mistake. So let's print this again. And you notice this is the output now. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7, and then 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. So if we can just print those substrings on those range, then we'll be fine. However, let's just try an experiment, okay? Suppose suppose we are here. There's a S string, which is uh, Sam, okay? What is the output of Sam 0 to 0? Nothing. Right, because left is included, right is not included. So the minimum that we need is S of zero to one. That gives me S. So instead of doing X here, I'm just let's say, just gonna do X plus one for now. Let's try it out, let's try it out. It may or may, it may, or may not work. It might not work as we intend it to work. Okay, so let's see. Let's run this code again. Let's see, what do we print now? So we get 0 to 1, 0 to 2, 0 to 3, that's that's okay, and then 0 to 7. Notice also one thing, that if we go till 7, then we'll be printing from 0 to 6. Okay, let's, instead of trying the, the index, let's start printing. Suppose I'm going to, print all these substrings here, okay? Let's suppose I'm going to print all the strings and substrings are S of X to Y. Let's see what gets printed. If we run it, so you will notice that here's what I'm printing. U, UN, UNI, UNIF, and you see the last E is missing. Why is it missing? Because we are iterating from from z here. We go back to the index. It's slightly confusing here, but yeah, zero to seven. Seven is the last index, and hence the last index will not be included. Six will be included. So we need to increase this by one more here. Let's say let's just do that. Now let's see if these strings can be printed. And now you notice that we have all the necessary substrings present here. Now the question asks that we return a list, right? How can I do that? I can just create an empty list, result equals to an empty whatever list. And then instead of printing, I can just say result dot append that, whatever the substring is. And then in the end, I can just say print. This is gonna print, uh, list instead. Let's run this code. What happened there? Result.append. Okay, I need to, a mistake, return result. After making the list, you have to return it as well. So now you do return it, and then you get this kind of an answer that all the substrings. Let's run it for all the test cases. Let's just see, okay, 40 in test cases. Let's get rid of this guy. Go back. 40 in test cases. Let's get the indentation done here. Our test is gonna fail because we are not handling the condition for none. 
So just add one more line here and say, if not else, then return an empty list. If this is, if the list is either, if the string is either empty or none, then we just return an empty list. Let's run this code again. And you notice that this is the output for all these strings. Doing, I keep doing mistakes. Let me add E here. And now let's run this. And you will notice this is the output. We have for uh, universe all these substring printed. And then we have for the next string, for the next string. And then last two strings, you notice that these empty list. We are, this is our choice. We have chosen that from the empty or the none. Of the <coughs> these string back. I'm going to mute you guys. So any questions on the solutions? Uh, Himanshu, for this solution, say we have some duplicates, like say three letter B, B, B. So mm -hmm. you might be ending up your code might catch more duplicates, right? So let's say, okay, so you were making the problem a little bit more interesting that I was not doing. So you're saying that what if there are duplicate substrings? Do we need to get rid of them or not? I have not asked for that in this question, but let's say that there are, okay? And then that condition is enforced. Then what can we do? There are multiple ways to fix that problem. And uh, I mean, I'm happy to discuss some of these solutions, but uh, what do you think? What, what can we do in that case? We can use sets. That's one. Yes, exactly. We can. That's one solution. We can use sets. We can put all the substrings in a set, and the set will keep all the objects unique. What else? What else can we use? Similar to sets, we can also use dictionaries. We can count if something is more than once, and then we can, uh, if there is, if that is the case, then we just not print, print it just once, basically. Any last minute questions? One sure. Yes. Yes, a question. We said length is L. Why we did L plus one? What is that? We said length mm -hmm. is saved in L, right? But in the for loop, we said L plus one. So the reason is this. Let me show you what the reason is. Uh, let's go to terminal for a second. All right, suppose we are here. There is a string called universe. Right? Len of S is what? Eight, right? So if I do, what do you call it? Range of len of S, then what would that be? Eight, that means one less, right? So if I just do list of range of len of s then this is what gets put so i'm going to go only till this index seven if i just go by len s so let's let's try it out okay suppose i am saying from one to len of s minus one if i do that then i'm going to get the last character skipped so i add one more to help that Once again, let me come here. Explain this. Suppose you have this string 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So if I was to say, give me the answer for S of 1, 2, 4, what would be the answer in this case? It would be A by A. So I need to so I need to get to index five in order to get A Y A K. Sorry, mistake. And you might have a better solution to do that. There are multiple ways to do it. And one one more thing here, basically, if for example, if I was to say S of 100, like in, access the 100th index, that will be an error. 
But in slicing, I can always say any amount of index that should be fine. Slicing doesn't care. So I don't worry about the range out of bound range as well. In that case. So Himanshu, in the first loop, we don't need to go till L plus one as well when we increment X. So one second. So if you have coded it differently, that's fine too. See, I, let me show you. Okay. So suppose once again, let's say that we have three length string, A, B, and C, right? Zero, one, two. If I want to get all these substrings, right, then I need to print S of, 0 to 1, right? 0 to 2, and 0 to 3, right? So then 0 to 1 would be, sorry, sick. 0 to 1 would be A, 0 to uh, 2 would be AB, and 0 to 3 would be ABC, right? Are we good with that one? That much? And yes. so let's say there are two indexes, X, Y. So X can start from either zero, one, or two. And the end Y will be always be starting from X. It will, it will begin with X and will go all the way till here. So that we can capture this character. You know, the right bound character cannot be catched, cannot, cannot be caught. So X is okay with going from zero to range of length, but for the Y, you can go range of length or whatever that range of length is plus one to get that last character in. Once again, suppose you have a string, this is the indexes. If I am to say S of zero to two, the output would be AB. So if I'm only doing till this guy too, then it's a problem. So I can go from zero to, if I can go to zero to three, let's add one more index here. Then I can get A, B, C. That's the point. The first iterator X is okay because it, it is going, because the first left range is always inclusive. This is excluded, right? If you have a slice of uh, if you have a slice of x x to y, then the slice will begin at x but end at y minus one. I hope that that explains. Yes. And once again, you may have other ways to count for these numbers. Hey, okay. much. Just one quick question. Yeah. Uh, when you did S of zero to zero, it showed no result. Why was no result. that? So the reason it showed zero result is that once again, when you say S of zero to zero, what is what does that mean? So start S of from zero. here and end, end here, yeah. right? And this is excluded. Yeah. This guy is excluded. So you essentially you are doing nothing here. So basically the first element adds one and the last element subtracts one so one minus one is zero so we don't get anything no no first element doesn't add anything this begins with zero okay so when you slice something okay let me write this again when when you have this syntax and you slice something from x to y then yeah. this begins at x slice begins at x and ends in y minus one. Yes. So if you write zero to one, then you begin at zero and you end at zero. Then you get the first character in that case. Uh, Imanshu, thanks for the explanation. I think I understood clearly. Is there a way we can avoid writing this logic? I mean, I got this logic that is very clear, but is there a way we can avoid like is something slicing almost going near out of bounds, which it doesn't go, but is there a better way to write the for loops such that, or there is, this is the standard way? 
I mean, there is nothing standard about it. I mean, this is just a problem and you can do any way you want. Okay. If you are concerned about this L plus one here, maybe you can think of something else. Let me, you can the if condition that basically if you reach the end, then instead of looking at the right ranges to a colon empty and that way go all the way to land. Something like that can be tried. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Let's see what what else can be done. Let's see. Uh, suppose you have for x in range L, you print this for y in range of x plus one to L. So basically, you want to begin with one plus index, and then you're gonna to go to L plus one. So you, yeah, you, you can do this. One thing. So I so once again, this will not help you in any way. Okay. But what we can do is, let's just say we begin with this. Well, this is not going to end. This is gonna, like, mm. not going to really help, but I can just, I'm going to say something like this and y plus one. Let's, oh, okay. let's try this. Let's try this if this works. So it begins this, 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 and it gets you this. If this helps you. So now I'm saying begin at X and end at L, but the slice is from X to Y plus one. Mm. Oh, nice. This let's 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 print the indexes. Let's print this indexes so this becomes clear what the indexes are going to be in this case. My mistake. X comma Y. X comma Y. Let's print that. So now in this case, for example, there is a, let's just one, one more second. Give me one more second, guys. Let me comment this out and let's use a smaller string. Suppose I'm going to say find all substring of let's say A, B, C, D, four length. Okay, let's run this. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and then you have one, 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 two, one, three. Right. So let's just print instead this guy. And Himanshu, can we put one this zero zero one one? Can we put x not equal to y so that I think that zero zero one one is useless, right? Yeah. So, uh, no, so I was printing. Then I mean, into, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sir. It will never be printed anyway because I am going to print x to y plus one, right? This is my logic. So when I do that. Zero, oh, how, one, did you zero, zero, three, zero. Uh, how did you remove that? Zero, zero, one, one. How did you remove it? By... Because I was just printing X and Y. I need to print oh, okay. X, Y plus one. Okay, thank you. So if this helps, then this is the logic that will help you. This is, I think, slightly more cleaner. Instead of adding this X plus one and Y plus one, basically we're just saying X to Y plus one. Mm. And let's just uh, let's print this. See if we are getting the correct answer. So that's the all the substrings. Yep, that looks correct. Any last minute questions? And is there a way to order it by length, like all the a is the B comes A comma B comma let's say B C like size. Can is it a way to order by size? Were you uh, ever in Python class? I think you were, right? Yes. Because I remember your voice, but I don't know your name is showing as Mac at the moment. But yeah, I have I showed you a way to do that. I think I showed you do you can you can sort this list based on the length, right? Uh, lambda or something or internal. You can use a lambda, yeah. You can use a lambda, but basically you can sort this based on the length, right? So you okay. can just say here something like result dot sort, and you can say something here. So basically, you can specify some kind of a key to sort it based on the length. You can just say let's say equals to length, for example. Let's run this code, and you will get the answer. Wow, thank you. All right, guys, thank you. It's already time up.
I'll see you in the next session next Tuesday. Cool. Thanks. Okay. So Thanks, Thank you. Tomorrow, Good right? Night. Session Good is night. tomorrow. Yeah.